step into the world of pretty maids all in a row. Released in 1971, this film features a cast of classic Hollywood actors, each bringing their unique charm to the screen. As you explore the movie, brace yourself for a roller coaster of emotions. There are funny moments that'll make you chuckle, surprising scenes that'll leave you wide-eyed, and touching ones that might even tug at your heartstrings. So keep an eye out for those memorable moments. Now let's talk about the legendary actors. Who was your favorite in the film? Was it the suave Rock Hudson or the captivating Angie Dickinson? With such a talented cast, it's tough to pick just one standout. As you relish this classic flick, we're curious what's your most special memory or personal experience related to Pretty Maids all in a row. Whether it's a funny anecdote or a heartwarming story, we'd love to hear it. Share your thoughts and memories in the comments below. Prepare for an unforgettable cinematic experience filled with laughter, surprises, and maybe even a few tears. It's all waiting for you in Pretty Maids All in a Row. Pretty Maids All in a Row, released in 1971, is a peculiar entry from MGM during a time of apparent desperation for the studio. The film, attempting to align with contemporary trends, comes across as a soft core production edited for an R rating. The vacuous atmosphere and uncertain tone may be attributed to Roger Vadim's limited understanding of English. However, the film's shortcomings extend beyond language barriers, encompassing a senseless script and Vadim's lackluster direction. Rock Hudson, typically known for a different screen persona, offers a contrasting role but fails to elevate the overall aimlessness of the cast. Pretty Maids all in a row struggles to find its footing as either black comedy or parody, resulting in a lack of resonance with audiences. The shameless exploitation within a major studio release further compounds its shortcomings. Despite the film's overall lackluster reception, it is worth noting that Gene Roddenberry, renowned for his work on Star Trek, penned the script. For some viewers like the one who encountered it at 16, the movie served as a snapshot of the era's confused views on relationships. Against the backdrop of emerging women's liberation, the film reflects societal fears and uncertainties about changing norms. The narrative, however, is not without its problematic elements, as it includes instances of casual violence and control over women, symbolized by a lever in Rock Hudson's character's car. This may be interpreted as a manifestation of Roddenberry's personal frustrations and hostility towards uncontrollable aspects of life. In retrospect, Pretty Maids All in a Row can be seen as an attempt to grapple with shifting societal paradigms, particularly in terms of gender roles. The film unwittingly captures the anxieties of a bygone era, showcasing a struggle to maintain traditional views in the face of societal transformations. Ultimately, the film's attempts to convey a specific perspective on relationships may have resonated with some at the time, but now appear as a strange artifact of the past. Watching it today offers a unique opportunity to reflect on the cultural evolution and changes in societal attitudes since its release in 1971. Pretty Maids All in a Row, a film released in 1971, features notable actors in its cast. One of the cast members, serving as a celebrity spokesperson for Philips Electronics HDTV in 1999, toured extensively. In the early stages of his career, he showcased a talent for foreign accents, impressing Gene Roddenberry during his Star Trek audition. Roddenberry cast him as the ship's engineer, eventually named Montgomery Scott after the actor's Scottish brogue and middle name. Apart from acting, another cast member found success as a singer. He achieved chart-topping hits in Europe with spoken word and sung versions of popular songs, including Bread's If in 1975 and Don Williams's Some Broken Hearts Never Mend in 1980. These actors' diverse talents added depth to Pretty Maids All in a Row, contributing to its overall appeal. Pretty Maids All in a Row, released in 1971, features an actor who portrayed the Mad Hatter in various animated series. Before his acting career, he worked as a civil servant in the American State Department, transitioning to acting after being offered roles in television and plays. He appeared alongside Van Johnson in seven films, including Between Two Women and Men of the Fighting Lady. Pretty Maids All in a Row is known for a number of interesting facts. He was one of the World War II veterans who publicly thanked Steven Spielberg for the intense Normandy invasion scene in Saving Private Ryan. He was initially set to portray Perry White in Superman, but had to withdraw due to heart problems upon arriving in London for filming. As a result of a right shoulder injury in 1973, he often used his left hand to write and pick up objects on Macmillan and Wife. 
These aspects shed light on his career and the challenges he faced both on and off screen. In 1971, Rock Hudson starred in a movie called Pretty Maids All in a Row. He was also in other films like How Green Was My Valley, The Pied Piper, The Longest Day, and Cleopatra, which got nominated for Oscars. Hudson went to Bellarmine Jefferson High School in Burbank, California when he was 15. Even though he never talked openly about being gay, a book called Rock Hudson, his story talks a lot about his personal life. Pretty Maids All in a Row is a good example of Hudson's acting, and it's a movie worth watching. Kevin Dobson, known for his role in Kojak, described his co-star as his best and dearest friend, highlighting a strong personal connection beyond their professional collaboration. The film, a blend of dark comedy and thriller elements, indirectly ties to this relationship through the camaraderie shared by those in the acting community. The lead actor was a father to Ned Wynn with his first wife, Evie Wynn Johnson. Ned penned We Will Always Live in Beverly Hills, an autobiography detailing his life amidst his parents' fame and subsequent divorce. This book sheds light on his turbulent upbringing, offering readers insight into the complexities of growing up in a Hollywood family with connections that extend into his mother's remarriage to Van Johnson. Before his foray into acting, the star had a significant career in television production. He served as an executive director and later as a senior director of news special events at ABC, showcasing his talents behind the camera. His transition to an executive producer role for the Gillette Cavalcade of Sports was notable for giving Howard Kosel his first major opportunity in broadcasting. This phase of his career demonstrates a diverse skill set contributing to the broader media landscape before moving into more recognizable roles in film and television. The movie itself, released in the early 1970s, stands out for its unique blend of genres and its reflection of the era's shifting cultural and social norms. Despite its specific narrative and thematic elements, the film's connection to the actor's personal and professional life offers a fascinating backdrop to its production and reception. Pretty Maids All in a Row, released in 1971, features a lead actor who initially worked as a truck driver before entering the world of acting. In 1956, he appeared in two influential movies, Giant and Written on the Wind, which are often credited as significant inspirations for television soap operas. Among his six children, three pursued careers in acting, following in their father's footsteps. The main actor in the movie didn't have any formal acting training, but he still gave a great performance that people all over the world loved. He was really good at acting and had a natural charm that made his character feel real. Critics and other actors liked his work a lot. When he died unexpectedly, he left behind a lot of fans and people who admired him. After he died, his last wish was granted. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered in the Pacific Ocean. It was a nice way to say goodbye to someone who meant a lot to many people. It's interesting to note that he had a special connection with Ralph Thorson and his family. They were the inspiration for the movie The Hunter and the TV show The Huntress. He used to live near them, which adds an interesting detail to his life story. Even though he's gone, his influence in the entertainment world still matters a lot. He reminds us how powerful stories can be and how actors who love their craft leave a lasting mark. This text was 